Sorry to the still Bolly and more apologies in advance. It's still episode 14, right? But I thought based on the feedback I get and the way I fumble my way through that divorce conversation and custody and mixing up all these different terms, I thought the best thing to do was to get experts who could help me clarify some of these things. And this loud set of money that Nicole Young asked for Dr. Dre. Sorry, shout to a friend of mine, Jared Gray, who is an attorney at law specializing in family law. And I decided to just have a short little quick conversation with Gray to clear up some of these things and attacking it on to, to, to episode 14. So I hope this helped anybody who was um, upset at the way I handled the topic or just looking for more information, especially when it comes to, to, to us down here in Trinidad, the locals. Let me, let me, I want to know, basically at Witness all you know how to protect all your billions. So you don't have to pay 20 million in spousal support. <laughs> Or whatever them things is. So let me let me see if I could get Gray on the line and let Gray let me get some help clearing some of these things up. Hello? So Gray. Yeah. How are you going? Alright. So listen, I want to reach out. Thanks for taking the call because I, I, I talk about this thing about Dr. Dre and his wife last night on, on yesterday's episode. <laughs> right. I'm pretty sure I make a mess of that whole thing because I don't understand. I, I think the two million dollar <laughs> figure frightened me up front. <laughs> so I went in not understanding the whole thing. So what's your opinion on the whole thing to start with? And we could get into the details when you're um Right. Well, the starting point is remember, Dr. Dre is not he's a a, a, a normal person. In I say normal and from a financial point of view. Yeah, knocking so on a billion to, dollar door, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So we have to get out of our minds in terms of if she's asking for two million a month, that is unreasonable. Remember, what the, the number of factors that the court will take into consideration. And one of the major factors would be had the marriage not broken down, um, the court is going to put her in a position that she, she would have been, been in if the marriage didn't break down, if you follow it. Ah, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. That makes right. sense. So, and, and that is it, because remember, so the court is going to look at, okay, the marriage has broken down, yes. Mm-hmm. But if the marriage didn't break down, she would have been living a lifestyle to the tune of two million a month, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. So what I, I, have, I haven't seen the breakdown, but if, if the breakdown is one where she could justify that, that is how much she was receiving during the marriage. Well, that is what the court is going to take into consideration. No, so, let me ask you this, right? So, for instance, if we married and we have a joint account, right, and she could basically prove that this is what she was typically spending, she on good grounds right. then? Uh, de- definitely, of course. Okay, okay, okay. Of course, right? And, and if and it does not have to be a joint account. Like, if, if, during, the, if during the marriage, he was given her, Right. Um, two million, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah, that is that is what the court is going to look at, right? So that is one of the major factors. The next factor is the court will take into consideration her age. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure how old she is. But I know Dr. Dre is about what fifty, fifty-one, yeah, he'd be or? early fifties. So she would have right. been she would have been a little younger than that, right? So let us say she is what late forties, mm-hmm. early fifties, right? Um, she's at an age now where. Well, two things. So the court will look at what was her role during the marriage. If during the marriage she wasn't working and she was the housewife, well, oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> More grounds to stand up on again. Exactly. So if during the marriage she was the housewife, and remember, I'm saying that to tell you that the court takes into consideration the age of the party. So in other words, if she was 25 years old now, right? Right? The court will adopt an approach that she is still young and she can enter into the, she can equip herself educationally and she can enter into the world of work at 25. Ah, so it's future earning potential they're looking at then. Right. Gotcha. If she's 50 years old now, mm-hmm. she is at a disadvantage in terms of entering into the working world. One, and also in terms of equipping herself with the tools, seeing that she would have been a housewife for the duration of the marriage. Well, I mean, I would have think that you see why it's good to get to get expert opinion, because I would have thought, right, that that puts you at a bigger disadvantage. I would have thought that if you're, for instance, um, 
If you remember, there was Mary J. Blige and her husband went through a similar thing. And his claims to me, to the layman again, I like where you start because we not, I can it's not easy for me to conceptualize that amount of money in the first place. Right. But right. when I saw what he was asking for a spousal support, number one, I think brother is a man. You shouldn't be asking right. for nothing. But <laughs> then um, the, the figures was real. The same kind of thing, you know, loud, loud figures. And I thought that he was at an advantage because he had some kind of managerial role for her. So I thought as a housewife, you could have probably, not, no knock on a housewife, but I thinking that you could ask for less. But what you're saying is, is, is the opposite, really. Right, you see, yeah. So the what the court what the court has to factor in, has to take into consideration is the standard of living she would have enjoyed during the marriage. Right. Right? And so we are we are seeing that she's asking for two million. If she can justify that during the marriage, that is how much it was to maintain on a monthly basis. <laughs> yeah, but then the court ought not to deviate from that amount. Well, let me look at the justification. Uh, the first figure that catch me off guard is ten thousand dollars a month on laundry and cleaning. Right. So, but yeah. I guess I guess you're right. If if that's where you're spending, that's where you're spending. Because remember, she ain't wearing no no jersey that <laughs> like you and me wearing. Well, the next line is a hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars worth of clothes a month. So I figure, well, I guess you decide to spend ten thousand dollars on on that to, to laundry. Right. Exactly, because the the clothes that she would be wearing is nothing you could throw in the washing machine. <laughs> right, those are things that they have to like fine linens and things you have to go by the dry cleaner. So the ten thousand, it may seem a lot to the lay person, but again, justifiable. Well, here was my mistake too. I multiplying everything here by seven mil. <laughs> <laughs> I try, I try, I'm trying to make this make sense. And then she have a figure here: nine hundred thousand dollars a month in entertainment. Right. But I don't know. I don't know how entertained they have to be in no divorce. How entertained they could really be at 900 yeah. a month. Right. Again, yeah. so again, it's it, it relative. In, in her circles, that might be that might be the figure amount to right. entertain. And then another odd one I saw was charitable contributions. And I guess for you, that is the same thing, is, is whatever your lifestyle was. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And remember, she would, she would be in a particular social circle where that is what they do. Yeah, those things matter. Right. Okay. Now, when they say temporary spousal support, I was reading it online as an amount that being paid to you while we're going through the trial. That's that's right. That's what that's what it is. Right. Yes. Yeah. So so you call it so um, interim and interim order. The court would make an interim spousal allowance or support. Right. So how it would work? Um, while the matter is before the court, she she has to be maintained. Right. So that figure she's asking for, if she's asking for that in the interim, um, that would go on until the court, until, like, let's say the parties go to trial. And then the figure could either remain the same, be adjusted upward, or be adjusted downward. <laughs> no, wait. After, I thought when you settle, I thought that the divorce comes to a settlement. This is where you get a 50% or half of where you have kind of thing. But there could no, no, be no, time. right. So, uh -huh. well, I, as I, I told you, I haven't read the, the facts, but what I gathered is that, so they are in court right now. Yeah. So if they are in court right now, one of two things would happen. Either they settle, mm -hmm. right? So they could settle on that figure or they go to trial, right? And if they, and if they go to trial, the judge is going to, based on all the evidence before him now, mm -hmm. decide, well, if this two million is, an appropriate figure, or if it should be adjusted upward or downward. Okay. So there's the possibility well, from where here, you say that we could settle, but when we settle, there's still a spousal support figure that could be paid in, what is that, in perpetuity, until, until, or that you right. decide all that in the trial, how that works? Right, right. No, so what will happen, so like, let's say if, let's say if they settle on this two million, mm -hmm. it will be that she, he will, Dr. Dre will have to pay her this two million, Every month, and usually the order would read until, until she, uh, until she remarries, right? Okay, so she, so she would marry this... any Claire. Your, your your time, new new person right, to, to support since somebody yeah. else spouse now. Exactly. Okay, right? I thought so it was still that part, 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 part again it. because say if marriage is still that doer's part and divorce is still that doer's part, I had to retain you early, you know. <laughs> I had to get something. <laughs> we had to get something done, right? 
No. Yeah, so that is it. So, mm-hmm. so as a, and, and notice what I said, the figure could be adjusted upward because... You keep saying upward. Her, <laughs> yeah, so if her attorneys right. could actually... And remember, at the end of the day, it's, it's easy to get that information because there'd be a paper trail. So mm-hmm. if her attorneys could show that, listen, during the marriage, actually what would have happened is that she would have spent 2.5 million or 3 million mm-hmm. monthly. Yeah. But right, well, that is the figure the court will more or less go with. So you, you, in in a nutshell, you had to treat your wife a little bad over the years just to keep the paper trail. <laughs> <laughs> That's the advice you're giving, right? Don't, don't, don't well, go yeah. overboard. <laughs> well, yeah, no. Uh-huh. So, well, when, I, when I'm doing that topic with my students, I'll let them know that. And then they, they, so all the fellas in the class will jump up and say, oh, so, sir, mm-hmm. uh, I shouldn't carry her out to no fancy restaurant, carry her for um, doubles by sauce. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. say, well, I'm not telling all you to do that, but... Uh-huh. <laughs> But once they go down a particular road, right, that the, the court is going to um, make a finding that that is the standard of living that she would have been accustomed to. Yeah, I, guess, I mean, when you think of it like that, it's it really reasonable, you know, because, I mean, at that point, what we're saying there is the figures really wouldn't matter. It's what all you live like. Exactly. Years, so you can't really exactly. compare your situation to nobody else, one, I suppose. Right, exactly. Now, let me ask you this. Prenuptial agreements. Two things I want to find out about that. Do, even it goes down into detail for things like spousal support and all those things, and do we do them in Trinidad? Right. So yeah. So um, yes and no. Right. Yeah. So in, yeah. So in, in the prenup agreement, um, it can be very detailed, saying, "Well, if the marriage is um, it comes to an end, well, you walk away and you you you, you don't get anything, or um, he would be able to put a cap on it." Right, um, you I would give you a million. Agree to not give anything at all. You could, you could say you get nothing. That, that is a thing. Um, well, well yes. It, um, so each one, I mean, yeah. It, um, so to answer the question, yes, it could be that. Okay, okay. That okay. You, you would walk away with nothing at all. Right. Okay. Right. Or they could just put a figure. You just get a five hundred thousand or whatever the case would be. Right. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Right. So that's the answer. The first part. Second part. No. In our jurisdiction. In Trinidad, so we don't have um, prenups because our law is more derived from the UK. Right. Right, and in the UK, um, well, it's tricky there now in that traditionally the UK never had prenups, but from there's a landmark case in 2011 where the court sort of introduced it. So eventually it may become part of our. Um, Family law landscape in Trinidad, but as but as of right now, no, we don't we don't have prenups. But all these things exist, like spousal support. I I, I didn't know until yesterday researching that either that spousal support and child support is two different things. That's that's, yeah, that's a different thing. Remember, so spousal. So at the end of the divorce proceedings, um, if the wife has the children, she would she would ask for maintenance for the children and maintenance for her. Right, which is called spousal support. Right. So it's two separate things. No, for ch- for children, for child support, no. Is that only like for children who under the age of eighteen? You know, how does that work? Does that there's no, a no. limit to that? Or how does that work? Right. So the order for child support, it usually so the order would read, um, so the husband is to pay maintenance. Um, just give enough figure, a thousand dollars a month, every month until the child attains the age of 18. But right. then the order would continue and say, or until the child completes tertiary level education. Okay, okay. Right? Mm-hmm. So in other words, so to answer so to answer your question, the maintenance for, for a child goes up to when the child attains the age of 18. So if after the child turns 18, the child goes off and work. It ends there. If after Form 6, it goes straight on uh, to UE, the maintenance continues. All right. So the provision is like that. That kind of makes sense. Because I guess the, yeah. the, the goal of it is really to make sure the child on solid footing. Correct. Regardless Correct. of what happened. Correct. Because as it, the, um, one of the foundations of like the family law is that the, the welfare of the child is paramount. So the marriage has broken down, but the child is never to suffer then. The child is never to be a casualty. Okay, got you. And then custody is a whole next thing now. Right, that's that's so totally different. Right. 
custody is who mm. gets to who the child lives with up to the, the 18 or tertiary as well or how does that one work now right well um the custody is different in that remember as from the time you turn 18 you are no longer a minor so the court can't make an order as to who you would live with after you are 18 because you are an adult so the court can't tell you who to live with so it goes up to 18 and stops at 18. right right oh, oh yeah i guess i guess so, so at that age you could pretty much choose where you want to live I suppose, exactly. as an adult okay, right gotcha, so when gotcha. you turn when you turn 18 you can decide who you want to live with and the court can't intervene in that okay so now let's assume i get uh custody of the child right but my wife was the major income earner could uh-huh. you have could you have custody and still get the spousal and child support or could you lose custody and still get spousal support oh, no, or, no no of course so what okay. would, um so usually what would happen is that in the tra- traditional the traditional divorces right so the the norm the normal um case would be so the husband and wife, the marriage has broken down. The wife, let's say she moved out of the matrimonial home or she remained in the home with the children and the husband moved out. Right? But it's always, but 90% of the time is the, the wife who would remain right. with the children. Mm-hmm. So the order the court would make is that, well, she has key and control of the children and the husband now he has to pay maintenance for the children. Um, in a, so let, let me explain it better. Uh-huh. Um, so the marriage has broken down. So now the husband and wife live in separately, living in different houses. Right. Right. Um, the children, of course, will be living with one of the parents. Mm-hmm. So they would be living with mommy. And daddy now would have access Right, right, so some kind of visiting arrangement right. or when so I get to access, keep the kids kind of thing. The access will, will be one of two, either liberal access or structure. Yeah, the liberal meaning um, he can see them anytime. Okay. Right, so there's an agreement between him and the um, and his ex-wife and they decide, well, he will pass later and pick up the children or he will pass Friday evening or whatever. So that's the liberal access. The structured access is that the court actually well, would mandate when he would see them. So the court would make an order. So structured access, he would see the children every other weekend from Friday, Friday 5 o'clock until Sunday 5 o'clock. Okay, okay. Right? So the practicality behind the maintenance now is because the children live in with mommy, Right. The day-to-day expenses she would be incurring in terms of food and home yeah, clothes guess. and okay. okay, okay, right. So because she is the one incurring the day-to-day expenses, the husband now will have to pay maintenance. Now, suppose the husband get the children. Is there a possibility that the husband get the children and still paying paying child maintenance to the wife? But no, no, nah. right? nah. nothing happened. So. Okay. So maintenance is paid to the custodial parent, meaning so the parent who has custody of the children, the other the other parent will pay maintenance. All right, that makes sense. And then the, the well, so maintenance for here, what, what they call child support, we call maintenance. Right. And right, we have yeah. the same, we have the equivalent of spousal maintenance to your wife maintenance. It have that. Yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, same so, kind uh, of thing. Right. So we call it we call it spousal support. In okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now, the last thing I want to get into with this, right? In Trinidad, there are plenty common law marriage. Right. Where is either we sign an affidavit form or we live together beyond a certain amount of time so we recognize as common law. Is the, is the proceedings are pretty much the same? If, if a common law marriage with children involved was to come to end, is it a similar structure in terms of who gets support, custody, all those things? Yes, yes or no. So let me start by saying, well, we, have, we actually have an act, the Cohabitational Relationships Act, which would actually safeguard individuals who cohabit, meaning what we call shacking up in a common law um, relationship, but not married, right? So with the Cohabitational Relationships Act, it confers certain rights onto cohabitants, right? So mm-hmm. to answer the question, um, so if the cohabitational relationship has come to an end, Yes, same thing would apply. Um, the parties can go to court 
to decide who would have custody of the children. Right? Okay. And maintenance would apply. The, on, the only difference, so of course, the children will be entitled to maintenance. Right. Um, the only difference under the Cohabitational Act, because you are not married, the, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, can't, I, don't, I can't say wife, but well, the common law wife then. Right, yeah, yeah. She will only be entitled to maintenance up to three years. She wouldn't get to be on three years. Oh, so it doesn't matter if she remarries or not. Three years is the max. No, 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 but no. So if, if she remarries, if she re remarries before the three years, it will come to an end. But what oh. I'm saying is the... Oh, got gotcha, you, but the maximum. Okay, right, gotcha. the maximum. Okay. So like, if she was a wife now, mm -hmm. the maintenance could, could go on indefinitely. Right, 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 right. gotcha. Yeah, so in other words, so a uh, wife will have, for want of a better word, better rights than a cohabitant, than a common law wife. Oh, no, I understand some of this pressure on the home. Yeah, this is this explaining a lot. I, I thought it was the same. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, slightly different. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I had to get it together if that is the case then. So, I mean, I mean, you know, man, know a lot about a lot. Eh? So, it's not nothing like married insurance where you could just because this song is like an expensive <laughs> venture. It, uh, you think insurance companies is up? Well, we could we could get somebody to underwrite something like this in a game, and you could work out. This. <laughs> so, <laughs> once I know what's he spending every month and what's the child support likely to be, I could pay a small premium to cover myself. <laughs> oh gosh! All right, great. Just so I'm, uh, go ahead. No, no, no. What do I mean? No, I mean, but I know we say it in joke, which is why I always tell people, um, boy, make sure you're sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because um, I was telling somebody the other day, I, I did a trial earlier this year, and they, we went to trial on who has to pay the loan for the wedding, right? So the, the marriage lasted three months. What? <laughs> the marriage lasted three months from September the marriage lasted from September to December, right? And the wedding was, of, well, of course, one of these grand weddings, uh, something like 300, up, approaching $400,000. Wow. Right, for the wedding. Right, marriage lasted three months, so now they are in court now to, um, for the court to determine who has to pay. Who is going to continue to pay off the loan? Correct. Or, or how it's yeah. split up. Oh, yeah. So I guess it's not always about what we. Yeah, I guess if you're not set of assets, if you're now married three months, wow. Exactly. So, so the, 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 the advice is to have a COVID wedding. I'm taking that advice, right? Great. Have a COVID wedding. Do it small. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking that on board fully. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, for, for people who are um, listening and might know who you are. I'm going to ask you the awkward thing to get my run Because I know you, we went to Fatima together. That's where I know you're from. You're in Newton, too, Greg? No, I went, I, went, I, went, I went to better school, Rosary. All right, I will just edit that out. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when you when we graduated and thing, you were teaching for some time, no? Right, yeah. Right. Tell me about that now, where you were teaching and stuff. I taught in um, Holy Name, Holy Name Convent for some, yeah, about five or six years. All right, good. And then you went on to what, what, your, your current profession, just so people know who they're listening to. Right, yeah. And um, yeah, well, I'm a, an attorney, attorney at law, um, specialized in family law. Okay, good. So you've managed some experience in this. I, I botched most of them things I talked about yesterday because I really thought, I was looking at Jeff Bezos paying out 35 or 37 billion to his ex wife. Right. But I thought that whole lump sum was child support, temporary support. I thought that was everything in one. But I'm glad to hear that um, you clear up some of that because I guess that is separate in terms of how you split assets versus what um, is paid as child support and spousal support and everything. Yeah. Right, yeah. All right, good. Well, I know when these things come up, who to call. And as a teacher too, I'm probably going to reach out to you for, um, <laughs> <laughs> for some comments on this online schooling situation and what to do with these children at home. <laughs> Boy, oh yeah, that's a that's our next conversation altogether. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's something we could jump on and talk about. Yeah, man. Well, thanks a million, Gray. We got right, no problem. Anytime. All right, man. I appreciate Later. it. Good, good. Right. So this is officially the end of episode fourteen. Thanks for tuning in. I, I'm real grateful to Grace. Salute again for taking the call and helping shed some light in what is really dark areas for me. I hope I hope it was useful to you too, and you learn something or two, and. Try not to end up in a situation where you had to pay 
loan over X amount of years and then it's, it's, it's custody. To, uh, who, who gain custody the loan is what the battle is about. That is an odd one. And boy, it, it's so like surreal to me to hear Gray talk about this in the very calm, matter-of-fact way. He's just basically saying, yeah, well, if, if it's $10,000, it's $10,000. And if that is what the lifestyle is, that is what it is. So take all that into consideration in this little money week here and enjoy the week now for sure next week.